Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to part two of our series. Well, actually, it's part 2.5 because I did such a bad job recording part two that I just decided to <laughs> do it again and re upload it. Right? So, this is something that I'm doing the second time. Hopefully, it's going to be better. So, in this part, uh, we are going to focus on the robot and focus on um, basically creating a set of instructions for the robot arm to move, right? And we will do so by using a plugin that's called Robots, right? Grasshopper plugin called Robots. The way you can get it is by just googling for Grasshopper Robots. There we go. And the first output that, or not output, but the first search result that you get is the one that you want. You open it up, uh, it will open up this GitHub page, you scroll down, download the binary from the latest release, you click on that, and here you have the zip file that you can download, right? You download it, you extract it, and you're good to go. Why is this so dark? Be less dark. No, this is even darker. Instead, let me make, uh, make this lamp brighter. Okay. So that's, that's that. Now, once you have this downloaded and extract it into file, special folders, components folder, into, into this folder, once you have that done, um, you will still not be able to use it. And the reason for that is that the plugin is basically like the brain, um, but it needs um, like a library of robots for it to actually implement the logic onto, right? And right now, um, since you have just downloaded the zip file, you don't have that library of robots. So you need to get one. How do you do that? Well, the GitHub page actually does have um, somewhere here. I don't remember. Ah, there we go. Robot library. It does have the robot library here, which you can get, you know, the Bartlett library, the AA. And here they are just listing what kind of robots they have. So you might be lucky and just get one uh, from this list. In our case, um, I, I believe we have a, 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 a robot from Penn State. Let me see. Yes, Penn State IRB uh, 2400. So this is like a, a robot that we need. And the way you get it is by just downloading it from the video description. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put a link there in, in the video description so that you can get this, um, um, get this precise robot. So basically, once you download it, it's going to be a zip file, right? Um, that, that you get, once you have that downloaded, you need to extract that zip file into your documents folder. This is for Windows users, by the way. I don't even think the, the, the robots plugin works on Mac. So your documents folder, you need to create a new folder called robots in your documents folder. Open it, in, open it up and extract it and oops don't need that and at that point you will get your 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 files here uh, so meaning that that your library is basically placed right and now the robots plugin has access to well in my case it has access to uh, all robots that Innsbruck uses all robots that Penn State University uses and all robots that uh, U E M. I don't. Sorry, I don't know which one's which school it is, but we also have their robots, I guess. Once you restart Rhino and Grasshopper, um, everything is you'll be ready to go, right? But but before we begin, in the video description again, you will see another file, a Rhino file, and that file will contain. Um, one very important thing that you will not be able to do by yourselves because the, the, the way we created that thing was 
through measurements that we had to do in real life, right? And that thing is this tool together with the tool holder, right? So let me actually hide this robot so that it's not in the way and just show you... Oh, where are you hiding? Hello? Show selected? There we go. This little guy right here. The stool holder. Right? So this is going to be um, added, I guess, to, your, um, to, to the file that you can download from the video description. Um, and also, uh, I will be adding a box here so that you know the placement where the robot expects your um, material to be because that is also kind of measured in real life where we will be placing the stock material to cut out. So those two, like there's going to be a box here and there's going to be a tool here, right? Or, or kind of multiple geometries here. Okay, and now we can begin. Right, so let me actually disable everything here or disable preview of everything here and let's just take a look at, I don't think we need this, no we don't, uh, let's just take a look at this, uh... sorry I was just, yeah that's fine, uh, let's take a look at the setup that I have, right. I have my my element here ready to go and my element is separated into two parts. I really don't care about the bottom half of it. I only care about the top half, right? Because the, this is the surface that is going to be actually cut by the robot while the sides are, we don't care. Um, actually to visualize it even better, um, bounding box, uh, scale 1D. Just give me a second, a hundred millimeters, silhouette, and lock. Like, the, see these green lines? Oh, green, gray. See these gray lines? They are the boundary of the stock material that we will be, um, that we will be using, right? So these are very important. Uh, these boundaries are very important to to have because um, you, you will see if your design actually fits in in the in the geometry uh, in, in in the stock right if if the stock is not too small for your design okay enough blabbing also I noticed that I made a, a little bit of the of a mistake uh, this whole stock needs to be moved down uh, so that it meets you know the top ridge here. The reason why I'm doing that, the reason why I just moved down the stock so that it reach, reaches the top ridge is because I want to remove um, least amount of material possible, right? Because less material you remove, less cuts you need to make, less cuts you need to make, the faster it goes. <clears throat> so that's my stock. I'll do the silhouette again, silhouette and lock, delete. <clears throat> just so that you can see better. Now we can see that we will have like a thickened bottom, but that's that's fine. Uh, for me, for me, that's okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Sorry, need some coffee. So to begin with Grasshopper, the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to create the brain for the plugin, for, for the whole simulation. I'm, I'm going to use this as my node, notepad, right? So if I forget anything, I can kind of come back here and check it out, right? So the brain for the simulation. The brain is called program, and actually let me show it to you through the um, top menu, right? So robots plugin, components, uh, create program. Oh, come on. Is it not there? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, wait. Load robot system, create speed. Da, da, da. Create program, yeah. Uh, yeah, create program. We're using this bad boy right here. And for it, actually, 
Let me just do that. You don't need to do this. This is just for me to show you the, the names of it. Okay, so this is the brain, the main thing that will simulate how the robot will move while cutting this piece, right? For it to work, it needs multiple inputs, right? And also it has multiple outputs. Let's go through the inputs. The first input is the name. The name is literally just text. So we can just create a panel and I can, so uh, shortcut for creating a panel is slash slash. And I can also write its name. So slash slash um, tutorial two, enter. And then connect it to the name input here. So that's done. Next one is robot system. So what kind of robot are we dealing with? This is, you know, the library part. So I'll go to components and I'll find load robot system. Click that, plug it in. And here I'm just going to choose the robot that we're actually going to be using. So in our case, it's Penn State IRB 2400. This beauty right here. Um, there's also like a origin plane, but we are using our base XY as the origin, so don't mess around with that. Uh, this is just basically to move the robot. Okay, now it's asking us for targets. So uh, how do we want the robot to... No, towards where do we want the robot to move and also what kind of alignment should the robot arm have as it's moving to that point so a point with alignment is literally a plane so it's asking us well a little bit more than asking us to give it a little bit more than just a plane but it's basically plane and also how fast do you want to move to the to that plane right and with what tool so we need to create targets okay we can do that uh, create oh sorry I'm, I'm writing I I said that I'm gonna show you on the screen components create target bam like that a very simple one just asks for planes uh -uh, we will need more than that so first of all let's let's connect it to target as target one right and here I'm just going to show you different ways of how you can create targets so Instead of planes, instead of using planes, I'm going to say, I want my, my, my target for the robot to be described through the rotation angles of all of its joints. So it has six joints in total, joint one, joint two, joint three, uh, joint four, joint five, and then this little doohickey is joint six. Right? I believe I, I listed them correctly. I think I did. So basically six joints, right? So for um, this target, I'm going to use that. How do we do that? I right click on the node, right click, and I choose instead of um, like the, 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 the regular input, I'm going to choose joint target, joint target, right? And here it's asking me now for joint rotations and radians. So as I said, we, we will have like six numbers, right? For every joint. And let me just double check how I did it here. Cause I, I did it in a, uh, this is so, ew, that, 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 that. So all of that needs to be after the comma, that's fine then tool speed zone okay sure sorry about that needed to double check so joins it needs six numbers right we can give it six numbers so let me just create a slider between uh let's say minus 180 dot dot 180 i believe that's how we do it right Yeah, yeah, minus 180, dot, dot, 180 will create a slider with those bounds, right? And I will do six of them. Two, copy, paste, four, six. 
one for every joint right and now i am going to add them all into one list by using merge oops that's d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 d6 and we don't need d7 so i oops you don't see it we don't need d7 so i zoom in and i minimize it collapse it when you zoom in you can collapse things by the way in in certain nodes so we have six nodes or not six nodes but six values right and now they are in one list right here and the reason why i checked was because i wanted to see how does this target joint target how does it want the values to come in and apparently it wants the values to come in separated by comma so instead of um, us having text listed like so right we want the text to be 180 minus 180 comma minus 180 comma minus 180 comma in one line right so how do we do that we use text join command text join or node uh, text join we join up our list like that and we use uh, for fragment separator i will use dash dash comma this is not a dot this is a comma by the way that i wrote i know that it's it looks like a dot it's not it's a comma very important <laughs> and then click anywhere no don't click anywhere i'm stupid slash slash comma enter right there is it's a comma okay and now we just connect it to the join uh the joining the fragment separator sorry and now the output of this is going to be one line that says minus 80 comma minus 80 blah 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 right if i start moving this around you will see the numbers change right okay so now this can be attached to create target perfect easy 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 this is red now it's freaking out why is it freaking out it's gonna say warnings in program errors in program right it's basically giving me warnings and errors warnings and errors are spewed out here in these two outputs so let's check them with the panel this panel for the warnings and this panel oops copy paste and this panel for the errors so warnings will still um, basically warnings with warnings we still can simulate it's fine it's just giving you a warning that something is a little bit off but it still can work with errors it just collapses it doesn't simulate anything right so it says errors in target zero out of zero uh out in target zero of robot zero so target zero is literally our you know first target this one so errors axis one is outside of permitted range axis two three four all of the axes are outside of permitted range because we are doing minus 180. um i believe we can do we can play around with this so let's first move this um this this slider until axis one is satisfied right Bunk. see here it was happy so for now let's just do zero degrees because now with zero degrees i can see that axis one is happy axis two also zero degrees makes it happy i guess we can just do all of them zero right yeah and with all of them being zero the robot is indeed happy well except for one thousands have their tool set to default uh, so basically a warning that says that the tool is actually not hasn't hasn't been attached right and we do have the tool here time to actually attach the tool okay how do we do that well, first of all, where do we, do we attach the tool? You will notice that here 
in my in my example I have more than one input I have four inputs move speed zone and one input that's called tool how do you get those well for create target if you right click on it here you can tick mark <laughs> you don't see it uh, here you can tick mark any tool that you uh, not tool any input that that you want to have so in this case i want my tool input right click i want my speed input right click on the node i want my zone input these four or these three plus the initial one right so now like that so now for the tool input let's create a tool components create tool like that i will uh, take the tool output and connect it to here like this and now we can start messing around with it um so there is one thing that now when i say say there's one thing that i still need to kind of do but that that's fine you will receive it together with the file uh so don't worry about it let me actually just do this real quickly so that you don't need to uh, come on plane there we go how does it bake out yeah that's perfect okay that's it uh th don't worry about it you will receive the file together with this little rectangle here this rectangle is going to be important so let's start first tool name slash slash uh, hot knife hot knife connect easy second input tcp plane tcp plane is basically um imagine that your tool is a needle right so the tcp plane is where is that needle pointing at if um if it's if your whole tool is resting flat on xy plane that so there is like the xy plane there's the holder number number one there is the in between like thing and the holder number two and the handle for the tool and also the uh, sorry handle for the wire cutter hot knife not wire cutter handle for the hot knife the hot knife blade and then the tcp plane is basically where is the blade pointing at if it's resting in that position very a very important little plane to have right because it gives you the orientation of the tool as well as the uh, position of, of the where the tool is pointing so how do you get it you zoom into your files to your tool you select the surface uh, and you reference it in as a surface surface right click set one surface this bad boy right so now this is referenced in into rhino and we will extract a plane from the surface because this is super flat right so it's easy to get a plane from it um, i believe if i just do plane let's see no we don't do that you can see that the plane gets oriented here we want it right in the middle so we don't do that instead we do um is planner yeah is planner the, this one right here test whether whether a surface is planner we connect it we get the plane yay and then we um, connect the plane output to our plane input right here that's it we we have it going so this is our tcp plane i have no idea how it's actually translating like what what, what tcp means but at least i i, I think i did a fine uh, an okay job explaining it 
Now we have more inputs. Calibration forest list. We no, we don't do that here. We do that with the robot, not with grasshopper. So we don't care at all. We do that with the robot. Very important. Next one. Weight. How heavy is the tool? I don't know, like two kilograms, I guess. Is this in kilograms? Yes, in kilograms. So I'll just give it two. Probably less, probably like a kilo, but let's just do two kilograms just to be safe. Uh, then centroid, optional tool center of mass. We don't care because it's only two kilograms. Like this machine can handle much more than that, right? So centroid is whatever. Uh, and last one is tool geometry as mesh. So we need to reference in our tool without the surface, by the way, without this little surface. So you select all of it. In, Ryan, uh, in Grasshopper, you create geometry node. You set multiple geometries. Bam. And you reference in all of those geometries, except for the little guy there, right? So now they live in, or they are linked to your Grasshopper file. And we want them to be one single mesh. Right now, they're like all over the place. Three B reps, two meshes, one mesh pretty heavy. So let's actually mesh everything. Mesh, B rep. Um, that's shitty. Let's just do mesh like that. So now all of them were converted into a mesh. And now I'm going to join mesh join. Sorry, I'm going to use mesh join like that. And by the end of it, we have a single mesh, which we connect to the mesh input here. Let's hide. Let's actually hide everything like that. And congratulations, let's select this, group it. So you select all of the uh, nodes here, you click your scroll wheel, and you select the fidget spinner, the green fidget spinner, select it. You made a group, you right click on it, you choose color, and you, oh, come on. My camera is in the way. Actually, camera gets in the way too much. Let me do, this okay um where was i right click color let's make it white right click on the group and now here you can rename it and let's just call it tool good band by the way really good band anyway we have our tool set up it's going to be used for everything that we do um from now on uh, so next two inputs, speed, how fast it moves, and zone, how, um, how accurate it is. So a zone is basically you telling the robot how far away can it be from the target to still register as have, succe have being succeeded in touching the target in reaching the target. If you have a zone of two centimeters and the ro robot kind of places its knife two centimeters away from your wherever you want it to be, it's going to still think that it's okay. If you want it more precise, you change the target to two millimeters, for instance, right? So for the zone here, I believe we can use uh, what's uh, here. Zone is two millimeters. Let's do zone of two centimeters. Probably a bad idea, actually a really bad idea. Oops, pff, you don't connect it there. I'm stupid. Sorry, you don't connect it there. You connect it here to zone, actually, like that. And let's not use 20. 20 is, we, we want this to be pretty accurate, so let's use two millimeters. Yeah. Um, and last one is speed. So how fast does the robot move as it's doing the action? Uh, anything be 
above 250 millimeters per second is dangerous so let's do 150 or let's do 250 no let's do 150 connect that to speed input and that is basically and 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 the tool needs to be a little bit away from the rest of the group because we will be we'll keep using this so we need it kind of separated from from the the pack and that's it that this is our initial like first target being created which we describe through the movement of or the rotation of joints shall we play around well i guess before we play around we need to actually visualize it because the program itself doesn't visualize it so i'm going to go to components and i'll choose program simulation like that i'll co connect program to program like that and you can already see it and i will connect time okay time 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 so time is basically if you have the overall length of the program right that that that's going to be running on the robot uh the time goes between zero and one right so 0 0.5 you'll be right in the middle of it so i'm just going to create a slider 0 0.5 0 0.500 0, 0, and connect it as my time input so here, as I'm moving it, you can see nothing changes. And that's uh, the reason for it is because I only have one target. So there's nothing to go through, right? It's just, okay, this is my target. That's done, <laughs> right? There is no time when you just have a single position that it needs to be at. It just, it just stays at that position. That's fine. Um, and now last one is actually making this prettier so i'm going to create a swatch color swatch and preview custom preview so i'm going to take the mesh meshes and i'm going to give them a custom preview with the color swatch just like that okay there we go Actually, I'm, I'm leaving this not disabled. And let's not do white. Let's do like uh, something less boring. Yeah, blue. So, and now my, actually my webcam needs to go here because you need to see the whole thing. <laughs> so now, um, the reason why I'm not hiding the original uh, robot from here or not the original robot but the initialized robot from here is because th this robot is, is is showing the resting position of this particular arm uh, setup and mine is definitely not a resting position so with these sliders i will i will force it <laughs> into a resting position so we'll start from uh, D1, right? Oh wait, why is this go? Why is this ripping so so fast? There's something off. If there's something off, you always go into your 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 create target node and you start reading what it says, what the input asks you. So if I read this, joint rotations in radians, not in degrees. So here I'm describing it in degrees, and here it's asking me of it in radians. Doesn't work. I need to create degrees to radians tool. Uh, wait, this is stupid. Let's just write radians. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Radians. This node right here, and I connect a merge, like the merge degrees to this tool or this node and it's it will spit out radians that i can connect to text join right so it just goes in between and now this little guy needs to be a part of the group 
So to attach it, I just select it, make it green, right click on the group and choose add to group. And now if I move it, you can see that the group uh, adjusts. Just a little visual thing. Okay, now this should work. If I rotate this, or if I move this, it doesn't rotate fast. It rotates much slower, right? And it actually follows the, the, the degrees that I'm giving it. So actually, joint one is fine. Joint two, let's see joint two. Yeah, yeah, this one needs to be 90 degrees up like that. I think all of the rest are going to be okay. What did we use here? 90. Oh, yeah, yeah. Th this, this needs to be fixed, huh? Okay, sure, 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 sure. Let's see, minus 30. Oh, right, right. So, sorry. So, Penn State, uh, th this robot in Penn State, this is indeed the resting position of, of this robot. But what we want for our tool is uh, we want the tool to kind of rest a little bit down so that it's easier to, to access it. So we're doing minus 30 degrees here, which is basically just moving the tool a little bit down to get access to, to the stuff here. And also there's a lot of wires dangling, so we don't want to put too much strain on the wires. And also this gets upside down, I believe. 180, right? Yes, 180. So th this is the, the resting position that we are after. Okay, because we are going to be cutting with the long boy, with the long edge here. Right, so what we initially did right now is we created the first target that the robot will always need to reach before beginning a program, right? So before it starts to cut, uh, it reaches the, this is like the homing position, it reaches its resting position, which is like so. By the way, the, the, the whole script is going to be available for you to download. Description, just, just, just so that you know. Moving forward, we, we need more, <laughs> we, we need more uh, targets, right? Because now we, we need to start cutting. The way we start cutting is actually uh, pretty simple in, in, in its in its initial idea, right? Because we have um, we have this surface that this tool needs to somehow interact with, right? So we definitely need to reference in this surface. And for you, it's going to be something else, some sort of a different surface. But it it's the surface that you cut, or in my case, poly surface. I will reference it in as geometry. Geometry node, right click, set one geometry, bada bing, bada boom, done. Then I will create a bunch of points on it, just like we did in the simulation of how it would look like when it's cut. So I will make a bunch of points. Populate geometry. And you can see how, how much of a space I'm giving it. That's because I just remember how much of a definition it's going to need. <laughs> so geometry, I'm going to populate a bunch of points on it. And by a bunch of points, right now I'm just going to do like three. <laughs> just three points. We will increase the amount of points later. Because right now, we, it doesn't matter if it's three or if it's 300, right? If something works with three points, it's going to work with 300 points. Other inputs, we don't care about. Now, these three points will basically be where we will touch 
with the knife where we will touch the surface, right? The question is, how do we touch the surface? Does it just go... Um, wait. Does it just go in and just... Whoop, right? That's not good, right? So instead we are going to do an arc that goes in and out and also it goes in at an angle and out and then comes in from another side at the same angle only negative and also does the same arc so that this kind of a by the end of it a moon shaped element will fall out right or, or a ship hull shaped element will fall out at least that's the that's the dream um so we need arcs. How we how do we do an arc? Well, well. First of all, let's hide the the tool for now. We don't need it. Uh, we don't need to see it. So I'm just going to disable preview of it. And let's uh, hide everything that we have here for a bit. And let's actually draw an arc, which will need to be aligned sorry I'm, I'm i'm thinking out loud i shouldn't think out loud i should just check my notes <clears throat> so it gets aligned with y direction why is that it shouldn't be it should get aligned with x direction okay <clears throat> so we are going to create an arc that follows the x direction right i'm going to actually use points for this I'll, I'll, cre I'll create a point at zero, then holding down the... So you just create a point tool, or click the point tool, create a point, uh, type in zero, hit enter, it's going to make a point at, at exactly at zero. It needs to be exactly at zero. I'm going to hold the alt key. This is weird. Go away. I'm going to hold the alt key, and I'm going to click on the x axis arrow and i'll type in <clears throat> let's start with uh, 50 50 millimeters 50 millimeters to the left and 50 millimeters up left up right so we have uh <clears throat> god damn it we have our second point right and actually let's get it on the other side as well so that we have like point of uh, the point that begins or um, i know that i'm all over the place bear with me let's move it up 50 millimeters more i'll explain why in just a second but it's basically 100 millimeters up and 50 to the uh, along the x-axis and now let's holding down the alt key let's copy it backwards hold the alt key click on the gumball x arrow and copy it backwards by minus 100 so that it's basically mirrored right then then we will go in here into the curve uh, tool thingy and click on the small arrow where it says curve interpolate points we select that curve interpolate points or interp crv if you want to be fancy about it and we just click on the this point right here as the first one second one third one enter interpolates a curve through these three points we don't need the points anymore we delete them we have our path the way it's gonna work the knife is going to come at this point right here and it's going to slide along the curve until it touches the, the the bottom of it and then it's going to move up again right and it's it's going to do that at an angle here and then at a negative angle from the other side right so the, the, the idea is that I can show you uh, like that loft 
You don't need to do this, by the way. This is just me showing you. So the idea is that this is going to be how the cut um, cutting geometry looks like, right? Okay, we only care about this. So now I'm going to take this curve and I'm going to reference it in. CRV as a curve. Uh, let's get it a little bit closer. Right click, set one curve. Bam, that's that's done. <laughs> that's that was fast. Um, now we will. Uh, how do we deal with this? So now we need this path curve to be moved from here on to these three points that we have generated. The point here, the point here, and the point here. How do we do that? We create orient node, an orient node, and we're going to orient the curve from the world x, y, because that's where we created it, right? So we don't need to input anything into our source plane, but our target plane is going to be um, these points. But points are not planes. We need to create ones. And I'm just going to be lazy. I'm just going to create an XY plane for every point. You can see these little things. I can actually make them a little bit bigger. Uh, let's do 24 pixels. There we go. You can see these planes here, right? Um, and now if I orient to those planes, you can see the curves being created. Yay! Sweet. Um, I want a little bit more of an input here. So I'm going to, before I connect it, holding down the control key, I'm going to disconnect. Before I connect the planes, I'm going to rotate them. Rotate plane. So wait, that's the wrong one. Rotate plane. There we go, that's the second one, right? Rotate plane. We connect the plane to the P input, and the A input is our rotation angle. Uh, so let's say bit, somewhere between minus 180 dot dot 180. Something like that. And now as I rotate them, let's zoom in to this one. As I rotate it, you can see that it's spinning real fast. We know what that means. That means that this is, uh, asks us for radians and we're giving it degrees. So I'm going to right click on the A input and I'll choose degrees here. And now it's spinning properly, right? So now I can control the alignment of the planes. Let's disable the preview of the previous one so that it's not in the way anymore, right? And I'm going to use it to orient the path curves like so as and now as i change the angle you can see that i can adjust the path curves the angle of the path curves this is important because this will dictate the pattern that we will get right so i will for this one i will do like 135 something like this because i think this will give a pretty nice pattern and also, you can have more, you can have less. I would create the definition with three and then increase the slider dramatically later. Okay. Next, let's disable preview of everything and continue working on this. We have our curves. The problem is that as we, as I already told you, targets for the robot doesn't want curves. It doesn't care about curves. It wants planes. We can't give it curves. So I, I need to somehow create a bunch of planes on these curves for this to work. Let's, let's begin. <laughs> I'm going to take these curves that, that we oriented, that we got by orienting, and I'm going to divide them divide curve i'm dividing them and i'm going to divide them by count of let's do 15. actually it can be any number but i don't think we need like this insane amount right i think 15 is reasonable maybe even less is fine 
but 15 seems to be reasonable. So that's our divided up curves. And what it gives us, it gives us points. So uh, actually it gives us 16 points. So this is like a weird thing where here it says 15, here it says 16. Uh, the reason uh, here it gives us 16 points per curve. The reason for that is, um, let me just quickly explain. Imagine you have a line, right? And here you say, I want to divide it into two segments, right? And the line has the start and the end, right? And then you divide it into two segments, right? So you put a point here. How many points does the line have? Not two, it has three, right? So let's say you want to divide it into four segments, right? So you put two points, two more points here. The line then has five points with four segments. It will always have one more point than it has segments. This count is how many segments the line has, meaning that the output of points is going to be plus one always. Important to, to know. Okay, moving on. We don't care, uh, well, we do care about the points, but we much more care about the tangents. And the way we will work with the tangents is, oh, how do I explain this? So the tangents are going to, okay, let, let's do it this way. Forget about this just for a second. I'm going to show you one, uh, I, I'm going to show you how the, robot reads a plane and how it orients itself to a plane and for that for this example i will need to create a rectangle or uh, i'll just create a plane here in rhino just a surface um, just this little surface here because it's very easy to extract a plane from a surface that's why i'm doing it this way i'm going to reference by the way you don't need to do this this is just me explaining um, surface surface so i'm going to go fast is planner like that set one surface bam we get the plane in the middle target create target uh, that's our, oops, that's the wrong one. That's our target plane. And, 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 right click, speed input. I do want speed. And I do want the tool here. Just bear with me for a second. That is not where this needs to go. This needs to go here. And for the speed, uh, 150. Let's just do a fast boy. 150 and now uh, first this target then this target so I merge these two first this then this then these come in okay so now technically the robot should be able to touch this rectangle right this exact plane and it doesn't matter where i place this plane well okay it matters if the robot can't reach it it matters right but the the, the robot will always try try its best to touch touch the plane right and how does it touch it for that we need to zoom in and we actually need to investigate or, or check out the plane itself and you can see here that the blade is aligned with the x axis of the plane that's very important to note right and we want to move in negative x direction with the blade because this is like the cutting edge so we want to constantly be moving in the negative x direction right so this is how the robot interacts with the plane show or i'm sorry show selected this bad boy delete it 
and I'm going to delete this real quick just because we're not at that stage yet. I'm going to show you how to create that. This was just me, for me to explain. So on these, we need those axes and we need the, and the planes also describe how the robot will attack the, the element. So I want to get rid of the unnecessary bit. So I want to, my planes to be flat. Flat meaning horizontal, completely horizontal, but they need to be aligned to follow the curve. How do we do that? Well, we have this thing called tangents, right? And we can use it to create a plane. So for instance, I can show you an example. Uh, construct plane, construct plane, origin, tangent goes into X, right? constructs planes that follow the curve but in a very crappy way because just imagine the robot trying to kind of reach this and it kind of makes this whole weird bend like whipping we don't want that we want the robot to always look down as it's cutting right so this doesn't work How, uh, we need to somehow readjust it and the way we readjust it is by changing the tangent. By the way, the tangent is basically... Um, I can show you. Like that. Uh, just a second. I'm, I'm showing you what the tangent is. Visually, much easier than... Explaining. So a curve from every point has a direction and the tangent is that direction, right? Along the curve. So it's aligned with the, the curve at that particular point. That's the tangent, right? And here I'm just increasing the length of the, the curve, uh, sorry, of the arrow nothing more than that right so that's the tangent and i can use it to cr construct a plane right because we have the start of the plane the origin and we can use this to create an x-axis but as you can as you saw the x-axis then tilts and we don't want it we want the x-axis to stay horizontal how do we fix that well we actually very easy we deconstruct a vector deconstruct vector because the tangent is a vector we deconstruct it we get our xyz components and all we need to do is instead of its z component we need to write zero so we construct it again a vector by the way co construct vector construct construct oh come on vector Construct. Is it just a vector x y z? Yes, I'm. Yeah, vector x y z. So it is. And here we just feed in x is fine, y is fine, z is not fine. So for z we feed in zero. This is just a, like a panel zero, or you can do a slider zero. Doesn't matter. You just feed it into z like that, you get a new vector. Let me show it to you. Um, like that, like that, like that. Whew. This is the new vector, right? The, the old vector is that, Right, so they change in their x uh, alignment, right? And the new vector, or sorry, in their z alignment, and the new vector doesn't change in the z. It only changes in x and y. Perfect. Now we can use this, this vector, to create a plane. Construct plane. Like that, origin goes in here, x vector x goes in here, 
vector y. Uh, for vector y, we actually need to... Uh, how do we do this? We need to rotate the vector, right? So we need to... Uh, le le let's just say... Even though Rhino can guess what we want to do, right? Because we are giving it the... Um, we're creating a, a plane by giving it the center point. And we're giving it the vector x, right? So it kind can kind of guess where that vector y is going to probably be here. But sometimes it's going to... Uh, if, if we leave it to be automatic, sometimes it's going to give us vector y in the wrong direction, right? So it's going to flip it. And we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to take this vector and I'm going to rotate it. Rotate uh, the, the one that shows an arrow being rotated. Important that you choose this one. Rotate that vector. And I'm going to rotate it around an axis that is set to be Z axis, like that. And the angle of rotation, oh, at this point you should know. Right click, choose degrees. <laughs> and the angle of rotation is going to be 90 degrees. Or minus 90, I don't remember. We will fix it if it's wrong. And that becomes our Y. You can see that nothing changed, but trust me, you want this little, uh, let's say, insurance this little insurance you you want it to be there because if you don't have it stuff might start stop working okay so now we have a bunch of planes right and the planes by the way the plane x axis is aligned with the curve which is great that means the the blade is going to be running through it but the problem with it is how do I? Well, it, it depends. It depends. If this is the start of the curve, then it's fine because we remember when I, when I said that the movement needs to be towards negative x, like towards here, not towards, towards positive x, the movement of the, of the blade. So if it starts here, we're fine. If it starts here, uh, we will need to work a little bit more on it. Or just flip the curves but uh, I think I think it's gonna be fine um, for now I'm gonna keep it the way it is we have ourselves a bunch of planes let me check what else did I do oh right right remember where I showed you that we need two cuts this is only one right this is where it gets a little bit more tricky, a little bit more advanced. Here we have three uh, curves. You can see they're like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2. Those are curves. And in those curves, we have 16 planes attached to those curves. Let's say it like that, right? That's the N16 part. Those 16 planes need to be rotated to the left and rotated to the, to the right so, so that we have that kind of a nice cut from both sides. So we will, we will need to do rotate 3D on those planes. And I'm going to, I think, rotate 3D, right? Yes, yes. And the geometry that we're going to be rotating are going to be the planes like that, the angle, and also we're going to be rotating them to the, um, to the left and copy paste to the right. So we will have two rotations. The angle is going to be in degrees, not in radians. So I'm, I'm right clicking on the angle, choosing degrees here, angle, degrees here. And here I'm going to say, okay, 15. We rotate them by 15 degrees, like that, right? But that means here it needs to be minus 15, right? Opposite side. So I'm going to say negative, 
connect the 15 to the negative input here and connect that to the angle. So every time this changes, this number changes, this will, by the way, don't worry what's happening on the screen, that's uh, not a problem. Um, every time this number changes, uh, this input changes and this input changes in a, like a, with a minus, right? So you get the same number, only that it's a negative number. Okay, now we have two more inputs on both of these. Center of rotation. So the center of the rotation is actually the center of the plane, because all we want to do is we want to take this plane. Uh, if you have a... Pff, that's not how you draw. <laughs> if you have a plane... Right? Eh! Mouse drawings. Okay, you have a plane. Like that. And you want to rotate it, right? And you want to rotate, uh, you want to rotate it around this point, around this axis, anchored to that point, so that this vector right here moves by 15 degrees to the right, and then by 15 degrees to the left. Or in this case, up and down, uh, whatever, right? Orientation is whatever um so how do you uh, how do you get that well whenever it asks you of the center of rotation we just use the same plane that we are rotating it needs to rotate around its own center right so we just connect it like so and then you can see here that it rotates in a weird way let me hide the plane so that you can see a little bit better right so the way they are rotating right now is they are rotating around the correct center point, but they're rotating around the incorrect axis. Because the axis right now is set to be Z up. We don't want that. We want them to rotate around the X axis, right? So that the blade gets tilted as it cuts. So, how do you get the x-axis of each of these planes? You use deconstruct plane. Bam. Connect that. Connect the x-axis to the x-input here, and x-axis to the x-input here. And now, moment of truth, this thing should flap. Oop, oop. It does, right? So we have successfully rotated uh, both, uh, rot rotating both of the planes, right? So I'm just going to keep it a little bit um, like less aggressive. 15 degrees should be good enough, right? For 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 that. And one last thing, or not the last thing. Is it the last thing? No, it's not the last thing. <laughs> um, the question is how the robot is going to move through, through these planes, right? Because now we have two separate outputs. We need to somehow get them back into one list. Well, we will just use merge. Merge tool, that will force them back into one list. Like that. And like that. Minimize. And now they are back to being happy in, in, in one in one list okay so now next up um the logic is like so or actually before the logic before before this portion right here before this portion let us create a target I'm going to create a target and I'm actually going to show you how the robot moves through these right so create target or uh, I promise that I'm gonna show it here components create target there we go right click we want we want we want we want uh, what do we want <laughs> yeah it is, does need to be linear motion right yeah so we do want linear motion. Uh, okay, I, I think I know it. 
create target, right click on this, tool input, speed input, zone input. Should be good enough. These four. First input is planes, right? Because we're not using joint movement, we, we're using plane movement. Planes, bam. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, one, one, one more, sorry. One more. Uh, motion input, joint. Uh, joint is basically you forcing the robot to move from one place to another by in in a linear motion so it just moves no wait sorry linear is when the robot moves from one place to another the end of the tool moves straight joint means that the robot might it will always take the shortest path with six axes the shortest path is never straight it's always like a you know kung fu style um so for this we definitely want linear motion not joint motion okay tool we have a tool sorry i'm getting a little bit tired we have a tool we connect a tool to the tool input thus the tool will work speed for now we will use speed of 150 this is definitely not the speed that we will be using during the cutting. It's going to be a little bit less uh, than 150. Zone in millimeters. I believe we use 2 millimeter zone. Yeah. So it's going to be the uh, same zone as what we used here. 2 millimeters. Slash slash 2. Enter. This will not change. That, uh, thus I am just using a panel. And th those are our targets. So now the logic. First, the robot needs to access its homing position, which is this, right? Then it needs to go through all of the targets, all of the planes in a linear motion, right? So a homing position uh, and then the planes merge. We use merge. One little thing here that we will need to fix is the dashed line. The dashed line means that a data tree arrives at the create target input. So I right click on the P input here and I choose flatten to make sure that all of the targets are in one list rather than separate lists. This, this is all it does. The flatten, that's all it does. It just takes a more complex data structure and just flattens it out into a single list you know first move here then move here then move here then move here okay we have our target here our target here this is the first target so it goes first into the merge and this is the second target list which goes second into the merge and then we minimize this and then it just straight up connects as t1 by the way, there's like T2, we don't care about T2, we only care about T1 in the create program input. Okay, shall we? Whoop. Shall we investigate? Oh, by the way, no errors, that's a very good sign. Let's start going through the time. And then see how it changes. But also, is this fine? No, it's not fine. So uh, that's that's the first thing that I noticed is that while the alignment of it is correct, right? This is exactly how I want it to be aligned, right? The knife does follow the curve with its sharp edge. The problem is that I want it to start here and to end here, not other way around. So we will need to uh, we'll need to fix that. How do we fix that? Because right now it's it's um, as it's cutting in, it's cutting with the other other side, right? Well, one way to do it probably is to select the curve and and type in flip in rhino 
I don't think it's gonna... It's the same thing, right? Never mind. It just works. No, it doesn't work. It just flipped around the whole damn robot. Okay. Sure. So we don't flip the curve. That was a bad idea. How do we... How do we fix it? Let's come go back and let's investigate the planes. Oh, now with the planes, by the way, you can... Add, since we can change the orientation and so on, since there are so many values that we can change, you can see how... You know, that the robot adjusts itself to whatever value you, you give it. We keep it as 15 here. We don't care about this for now. Um, we do want the plane to be flipped. So this vector, this vector right here, this little guy right here, needs to be reversed. I will just use reverse tool right here, reverse, and connect it like so. Connect that to X and to basically just replacing it. So now it's reversed. Did it make any difference whatsoever? Uh, where, where is my simulation? It feels like it did, but I might be wrong about it. Yes, it did. Okay, great. So now, okay, fr fr from the start, since I reversed the X axis, now as the robot, where is it? There it is. Now, as the robot approaches my curve, you can see that this is the long edge, right? And it approaches the curve at an angle. And it starts cutting. It's going to cut with the long edge. So all we needed to do was uh, that tar ta tangent vector that we had, uh, we just reversed it. So X got reversed in into another direction into opposite direction and now it works Ooh, okay got scared there for a second so now we we know that this whole thing works and everything is in uh, under control uh, there are a few things that i don't that i want to implement thing number one is in between uh, these curves, as it's moving, I don't want it to take the shortest path. You know, let's say it finishes cutting this curve and it moves to this one, and then it takes like the shortest path to reach this curve. I don't want that. That's bad, bad, bad thing. Bad things will happen if we do that. Uh, so I have created this rectangle right here, or you can do, let's do it ourselves. So you just grab a rectangle tool, you draw it on top of your stock material, you lift it up, I'm going to lift it up like 50 millimeters, like 5 centimeters above, and I'll just scale it down to have it a little bit smaller, just so that it's not in the way. So we have this little rectangle here, and I'm going to create a plane in the center of it, right? Uh, let's let's work with it somewhere here between the target and the merge curve reference it in set one curve then is planner is planner to get the plane right in the middle and that is going to be where I want my robot to move after each cut how do we do that well glad you asked 
it's going to be actually a little bit more tricky uh, than what we are uh, what we're used to so I need to how do I explain this if I show if I show the planes to you through the panel this is how it looks like right uh, we have too many I can't show it like that let me show it through param viewer it's gonna be a little bit easier to see right now the merge all of the planes that we have of, on these curves are separated into three branches that's because we have three curves and in each branch we have 32 planes right so what I want to do is right at the start of each branch I, uh, sorry so uh, you can read this as three separate lists if I here at the start if I create four then here it's gonna see data with four branches right so branch is you can just put an equal sign that it's the same thing as list right so data with four lists I want to add this middle plane the safety plane I'll call it the safety plane I want to add the safety plane to the start of each list so that I'm I know for a fact that before it starts cutting it will move to that plane and will move from that plane to the first um, first curve right or, or, or first point on the curve so I'm making sure that it's not going to scrape the, the, the surface of my element. How do we do that? Well, we need to... Right now we have only one plane and here we have four paths. We need to add... Um, we need to have one plane for each path. So I'm going to repeat repeat data I'm going to repeat the data I'm going to repeat the, the, these planes or this plane the safety plane four times because I have four branches and I could just write four here and connect it and call it a day but the problem is that if I then change this slider this uh, I'll need to change this slider and also I could connect from this slider sorry from the slider right here which would kind of work but it makes a long wire i hate long wires so instead we are just going to ask yo how many branches do you have right and we can ask by using tree statistics tool tree statistics connect the merge to the tree input here and then for the output wherever it says count it's going to give us the correct output that we connect to the L, to the length input. So it doesn't matter what kind of a number I, I'm using, this will always going to update and it's always going to kind of uh, multiply how many planes I have, the same plane. It, it, it's basically multiplying the safety plane four times right now. Great, now next up is I need to somehow take this and add it to the to these lists i believe i did it in a very straightforward way that is not a straightforward way a much more straightforward way is if i just take this list i right click on it and i graft it right so now each of the copies of the plane is is it is in its own list and the reason why I did that is if I do every time when I uh, when I start talking about data structures it's tricky by the way uh, on my channel there is data tree structures explained with ducks I believe it's ducks wait let me let me see Just a second. Because if, if you're interested in what the hell is going on with the data tree, uh, that's the video that I would suggest you watch. 
because I really tried explaining um, explaining it through that video which I am currently trying to find um, data tree structures explained index nope grasshopper data let's try this Yeah, sure. Uh, shush. That. This is like a one hour, 11 minute video of me talking about the, 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 the Prime Viewer and explaining everything through um, like visuals. 2020-40 LTH tutorials, data trees for beginners, Rhino plus Grasshopper. Check that out. Where were we? Data trees. We have four branches here. That uh, The data tree looks like that. It's a pretty ugly data tree. To make it less ugly, you can right click and choose simplify. And then it's going to become this. I'm not gonna explain why, just trust me, bro. And then this one also pretty ugly. This comes from merge. I'm going to right click on it and choose simplify as well. So now we can see that both data trees have four branches. So there are four lists, only that this one, there's only one plane in each list, the middle plane, the safety plane. And in here you have 32 planes in each list, you know, because those are on the curves. I want to add the safety plane at the start of each of these lists. So I'm going to use merge again. So for D1, repeat data comes in. For D2, because that's the, you know, I want it at the start of each list. And then for D2, the rest of the planes come in, like that. Zoom in, minimize. We're good to go. Now, if I, instead of using this merge, if I connect um, the new one to the create target, and go through it with the simulation. Whoop. 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 And see how it's, so it finishes up. Wait, let me go back. And now it goes through once, it goes through twice at different angles. Then it finishes up, goes to the middle, and continues on to the next curve, always. Perfection. Okay, we are done with this. Last thing that we will do is create, is make sure that the movement that the robot arm does is fast, when it needs to be fast, right? So when can the robot arm movement be fast? It can be fast right when the right when it goes from one path to the middle, right? So it finishes up and goes to the middle to the safety plane and then moves from the safety plane to the uh, to the first cutting plane here. So the question is, how do we, um, how do we implement that? I will need to have two different targets that will play together nicely. And I believe we used merge for that. Yes, we used merge for that. And let's say, um, let, let, let's think about this for, for just for a second. And while we think about this, let's create that second target. Since I'm lazy, I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to copy paste to get the second target. And this, this is going to be, let, let me just call this the uh, cut slow targets. 
Uh, that's not how you write targets, but that's fine. And I'm going to co color it, color code it. Um, uh, let's go for this pretty peachy color. And this one is going to be color coded green. And I'm going to call it move um, gotta go fast dash sonic tm trademarked okay gotta go fast so this one the the, the cut slow is going to be like 30 speed of 30 uh millimeters per second maybe uh, let's do 50 because we can't wait that long 50 millimeters per second gotta go fast will be uh, let's keep it at 150 what do we change with the gotta go fast uh, with the mo motion of just not cutting but just moving first of all we change from linear motion to joint motion important why do we do that because when it needs to go through uh, far distances from one cut to another it's much better to let the arm decide by itself how it rotates and sometimes find a better movement solution than to force it into a straight path the reason why we're not doing it here with cutting is because it might choose a path that is not the prettiest and it's going to just mess up our element while it's moving within the tolerance it's it should be fine and then the other thing that we change is the zone instead of two millimeters we don't need it to be that precise we do we use 20 millimeters two centimeters of of error we just need it to move to the approximate area and then start cutting so right as it moves to that approximate area is going to sorry right as it begins cutting it's going to uh, become much more precise immediately and it's going to kind of snap in place okay so now 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 we will need to deal with these two and and merge them together but before we do that uh, we need to decide which planes from here which planes from here are cutting planes and which planes from here are moving planes right just from this list uh, the way i kind of the way i'm thinking of doing it is by actually just looking at the simulation and let's make it even more simple let's do count two only two curves okay let's see the let's see the behavior of it expand this so i'm going to move it very slowly in time okay so this is movement right this is movement and this is bam it touches target one meaning that the first plane should be regarded as movement plane right the question is what about the second plane right so it touched the target that's the first plane in, in every list remember we added it and now it's moving here bam was that a movement or a cut that is still a movement so the second plane in in every list is also movement so that one is also going to go fast and now every remaining plane in the list this one as well as this one these ones as well as these ones are uh, cutting and now like this is the last plane of the list of the data tree uh, I'm sorry of, of the data branch and now it's going to start moving again right so again moves to the first plane here oh by the way Jesus the the angle okay so it moves here that's the first plane again that's the second plane again and then it cuts so two planes first two planes need to be movement we need to extract them the way we do that is with list item list item so this merge we connect that to the list item 
and for index that we are extracting we get um, how do we do that let's do dash dash zero hit enter so this is the first plane double click on it hit enter to create a new line and type in one zero and one so in in grasshopper we count from zero meaning that uh, if we plug in zero and one here it's going into the list item it's going to give us the first two items of the list and it's red the reason why it's red is because this it reads this as multiple lines of data so like a poem basically and it says yo i want numbers not a poem how do we i keep saying how do we fix that but how do we fix that well we right click on it and we choose multi-line data we un unselect that right we click on it so now every number gets placed in its own uh, little list uh, as as its own little list item and thus we create list item with first two planes here and those go in and connect to create target bada bing bada boom okay what about these guys cutting slow so these guys are basically um an inverse of what we just plugged in right we plugged in these planes so the the cutting targets are, should be everything else everything else except for these uh these planes so we can just use cull index cull index and cull from the same list from the merge list cull out these index indices like that and connect those to the cut slow just like that um oh yeah cull is remove right cull remove same same uh, same logic okay okay i think we are we are kind of done right because we have our planes we have our targets oh we need to um, actually make them kiss again right so i'm going to merge first comes the movement then comes the cutting slow like that oh we I, I made a mistake i almost said we made a mistake no it's me who made a mistake here you can see that here it says uh, flatten right i flattened it before we don't do that right now because we are going to be merging and it really messes up our data uh, like yeah it messes up our data because we are still working with multiple paths so i'm going to right click and untick the flatten here and also also right here flatten off okay the hell is going on two robots yeah don't don't worry about that we're, we're gonna fix it in just a second um by the way that's what happens when you don't flatten it's not even two it's like three robots um so unflattened data like the grafted data gets merged and then it gets flattened here at the output god damn it we, i just can't finish this tutorial notice how when i hover my mouse over the output it's a little bit funky right it looks a little bit weird and the reason for that is because the address is um the address for the data streams is incorrect and why is it incorrect well that's because mcneil doesn't know how to code their freaking plugins no i'm, I'm joking i'm kind of half joking though because Technically, zero and zero zero are the same thing, right? It's it's the same thing. One and one comma zero. This is also it should be the same address. It's not the same address because it, this comma zero comma zero is trash that just got attached by I don't remember I don't know which I don't know why 
Yeah, Curl Index just straight up attached some trash to the address, while List Item didn't attach attach any trash. And now they don't work together anymore, and we need to fix it. Thankfully, the fix of it is pretty simple. Create target. The T output you just choose to simplify. So simplify gets rid of the trash. T target here, simplify gets rid of the trash. Now this works. And now we have two paths. We have two branches. We right click on the R output and we choose flatten to get um, those all of those planes into one list finally. And we connect that to D2 here before it moves into the target collection for the main like create program node. All right, investigation time. So I'm going to try and move this uh, in a consistent manner so that you can see the speed, the speed change, right? So one, two, three, let's go. And now it's slow. Now it's going to be fast. Now it's slow again. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So that works. What's next? Next is... Well, actually, we're almost there. Because I'm not going to, to show you this part. This part is... There's a Python script and so on. And it's very custom for the... Uh, for what me and Anton were doing um, uh, with with the robot, so we're not dealing with this. This is going to be on the on the teacher's side. Uh, what what we care about is you checking out if the robot can actually reach in the nooks and crannies of your design, right? So this should be enough. Uh, so there's only one last thing that I will teach you. And that's checking how long it's going to take. So here, T output of the program simulation is time in current time in seconds. How long does the program going to take in seconds? And I can just, it's a number, right? So I can um, divide it. I can take that number and divide it by 60. Or, by the way, shortcut for dividing it by 60 is just divide, uh, divide the, like the I button, uh, symbol, symbol for divide, and type in 60, divide 60, enter. And now, by default, whatever you input into A is going to be divided by 60. And we just grab a panel, enter, bada bing. Bada bung. We got ourselves uh, 0 0.43 minutes, right? So not even a minute. Okay, but that's only two touches, right? It's it's only going to touch the the the, the styrofoam uh, only here and here. Everything else is not going to be cut. Uh, let me actually hide this. Not delete. Delete is a uh, hide. Hide this. So you have a block, and that's only the two parts where it touches the the block. We need more. We need at least. Uh, I I don't think a hundred will do, but let's say a hundred. Right. A hundred. This is how it looks like. It's definitely not gonna be. Uh, looking like that, let me disable that. These are the paths. So with 100, you can kind of start seeing, you know, that, yeah, yeah, it's it's going to cut away something. You know, it's going to carve out something. It's, it should create a pattern. But to be safe, I will probably do like 200. And also, with 100, it became 20 minutes. That's that's the that's the tricky bit, isn't it? Right? At that point we change this up to 250 because that's the maximum 
<laughs> maximum speed that we can get. Uh, we change this up to, let's say, let's do 75 millimeters per second. This is very fast, but maybe we will manage it. And let's do 250 here. Let's see how, how much of time we have um, actually saved. Six minutes. We've cut away six minutes. So that means here we can do 200. Because uh, the reason why I'm talking about time is um, we are going to do a wall that is uh, three panels by six panels by two panels, right? So let me grab my trusted calculator. Three times six times two, 36. Uh, let's say, so with 200 cuts per panel, we are at 28 minutes. Let's say to change the material and so on, it takes two minutes, right? It's not going to take two minutes, but let's say it takes two minutes. So 30 minutes in total. 36 times 0 0.5 hours, right? Half an hour, 0 0.5 hours. 18 hours divided by 8. Two and a quarter of full days of cutting. We have four groups in total, times four. Nine total days of cutting. We can do, um, we can cut two days per week, maximum, right? Oops. Four and a half weeks. So that's going to be uh, a little bit more than a month. Of, of cutting if we do 30, um, 30 minutes per panel. This is why I'm, I'm showing you the, the time calculation. Very important to keep it as low as possible. All right, I think we're, oh, by the way, if you see rotation speed limit reached, that's, don't worry about it. Uh, it's, it's basically going to uh, rotating a little bit slower than uh, than what's described here, but that's that's fine. So this is our current definition that I am going to, of course, share with you, um, and you will be able to use it. So please do. <laughs> okay, I think this this is a better one. I think this is a better version of of the tutorial. I hope you've learned something with it. If you haven't, well, too bad. See ya.